Hi, this is Mon Ras and you are listening to my daily thoughts number 21. Today's reflections are about Gladiator. Are you not entertained? screams the gladiator in the same named film and throws his sword up into the silently watching crowd. Are you not entertained? Do you remember that scene with actor Russell Crowe standing in the arena and waiting for applause after his excellent killing performance? Entertainment. For thousands of years the key to attract the crowd. Basically nothing has changed until today. Except that we can now be entertained 24 7 365 using the all might of our technology every imaginable place in our living moving and any other environment provides for sound images and movies we are bluetooth is called it from the moment of wake up to wake down with personalized entertainment and sometimes even when we sleep became the world we live in the real world, so boring and uninteresting that we see constant escape in form of entertainment? I asked around a little bit, why do you want to be entertained? And why do you listen to your iPod? And here is what I got back from the youngsters in random order. Hey, we got nothing to do. News are boring. School is boring. I gotta see new movies. On YouTube I am looking for funny and talented videos. I like to watch world records. So I don't have to talk to anybody. Time goes by faster. Wow music and wow videos are cool. Funny Halo 3 movies. Michael Jackson. I'm for comics. I like beatboxers and movie trailers. All this would translate into Discussion is out. Even news are out. New movies are in. Funny and kill the time is way in. Is this what we can expect from our future generation? A single call for entertainment? anxiously waiting for funny things to happen? I have to add, the median age of the group of young people was below 18, probably 16, and it might not be an exact mirror of the overall mindset, but it gives you a hint, uh, at least. However, we can find out in many other ways what people want, like when we take a look at the TV programming. If we were to take off everything that has to do with entertainment, such as advertisement, action, comic, game, music, reality and religious shows, movies, home shopping and soap operas, how much TV time would be left for the real content and issues? I haven't done the math, but uh, my guesstimate would be 5% max. And then we would have to analyze in which way these remaining 5% are presented. Would it be based on facts and open for a true discussion or, like so often, more in a guided form so that the key questions are left out? Yes, we have the big news channels. The only problem is that they are big and in the hands of a few who decide what news are newsworthy. But let's not put the problem away from ourselves. The most important question today is why we seek entertainment more than anything else. Does our perception of time and life itself have to do something with it? If I were to follow one of the mainstream religions, and it is these religions that define the foundation stone of our society, I would understand that I have to go to church once or twice a week give them money so they can pray for me. And unless I miserably fail and are unable to buy me out of my sins, I would go to heaven after I die. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? 
As long as I'm part of a religion, I'm taken care of, and I don't need to waste my time for useless self-improvement or spiritual development stuff. So now I can enjoy the little time I have in this life to the fullest and want to do so by just having fun. Adding to this, allow me to go back to my sessions number 7 and 16, where I said, If life is a one-time event, there is a tendency to think, I want to grab as much as I can before I'm running out of it, and I don't care what comes thereafter. However, if we look at the possibility of being reborn in another life, then one of a sudden the aspect of time and life changes, and timeless words like accomplishment, growth and learning replace those full-time ones such as money, power and status. So maybe, at the end, we should be thankful for the openness of our youngsters, telling us frankly what they think. They are nothing but holding up the mirror, reflecting what world they have been put in by us. For today I thank you for your time. May the higher spirit help us evolve. Until the next daily thoughts, yours truly, Mon Ras. And today's post-lectum is Is Rome worth one man's life? I would like to thank director Ridley Scott and also Hans Zimmer for their choice of music in the outstanding movie Gladiator, especially for the inspiring track called To Zuckerba, performed by Jivan Gasparian. It's definitely worth a listen.